Brendan Mitchell is a comic book artist and a storyteller, and he's also First Nations. As he shares his story, listen for how he pays attention to the fine differentiation between his culture and white culture, or mainstream culture, and how it has impacted his life. Powerful story, wonderful sharing, hope you enjoy. Might be upset, like, how come you didn't say anything? Or, how, like, oh, we already got approval. It's all good. Don't worry about it. You're going to like it. Uh, so, like, I try, like, look at it through that lens, right? Like, just because you went to, an, like, what is consent? What is uh, consulting? What is informing, right? Like, if you're just going, and I've seen things where it's just like, I've seen meetings, um, uh, not here, uh, but I remember being part of me and looking around. I was like, "Oh yeah, we got consent. They're over there in the corner. We told them." You're like, "That's not. You just told two people that, and they're supposed to represent. You're using that as a representation for everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. that's not right." Yeah. Uh, and the same thing goes for any of those issues, right? Like, just because uh, you might have gotten uh, consent from an elected official doesn't mean that you got it from the people that are going to be impacted by the decisions that you're going to be that you uh, the decision that you're you're moving forward with so in some ways you're speaking to the structure of the right to consult i think it's now negotiated in the several contracts when i read in the news about mining companies pipeline companies they've got several steps that they have to meet and one of them is uh, you have to consult with first nations yes and that so it sounds similar to that but at the same time fascinating to expand that same dynamic but apply it maybe to another culture is 2009 when a small group of um, elected officials, non-elected officials went to Quebec City to try to sell NB Power to Quebec Hydro. It had the same dynamics. A small group was deciding on behalf of an awful lot of other people without truly consulting or conversation yeah. about it. And so the kickback was quite phenomenal when a population woke up a little bit. And said, no, no, you can't make that decision without talking to us. Right. But you guys are allowed to get upset about it <laughs> and be like, oh, okay, we're going to fix this process. But when we get upset about something like, oh, oh they're angry again. We got to either like it, it. And that's those perceptions. Like, it's just awful. Like, yeah. White guy wants to sell and be part of Quebec. Oh, oh, we got to do something. Native person's upset about pipeline. Oh, oh, like there we go. Angry Indian, like. Like it, it, like it's I'm, just it's one of those like I'm laughing, but it's also very sad. It, no, it's sad, yeah, because there is no us. No, it's and and but it, and it goes back to knowing knowing our history. Well, why are we upset? That, like, well, why are you guys so upset? Well, what do you think? Like, there, there's a different like the the life and the things that I grew up with are different than the life like the life that you grew up with and the things that I had to deal with and the things that I know. Um. Like, even, like, living within the constructs of the Indian Act. Um, you know, I have to deal with, like, oh, you get tax-free gas, or you get free education. Like, do you realize what I live under, though? Like, I don't, it's it's not a tax-free holiday. Uh, I don't, like, anything I, uh, the if I build a house on reserve, it's worthless. I can put whatever, there's, there, I can build a, Two hundred fifty thousand, half a million dollar home, it's worthless, crown land. Um, and why? Like, and why is it crown land? Because we were, it's, it, it's all based off the Indian Act, and the, that destructive policy really control, like, con, like we're the only ones that have a policy that controls our identity. I have to be aware of. Uh, not that I have to be aware, but like you, I have, I have a number, and like the thing they don't realize is that we live in segregation. This is just like an apartheid. It is an apartheid system. Hmm. Like you guys stay here. We have registration of all you guys. We keep track of everything that you guys do. Oh, and also we know when you're going to be. We know when you're not going to be native anymore. We have we have a system to figure out how much Indian you're allowed to be. And, and recently there was a story in the news the past two months there was some sort of a decision that was made that then affected the the number of people that would qualify as First Nation status. 
Yeah. Or, and it was going to double the number. It, yeah. It, but, but it was just like what you described. It was like this percentage, that percentage. So, that, but it controls like, so unlike you, uh, you, you can say like, oh, I'm Irish Canadian. I've got this rich heritage and really proud of who I am and where I'm from. I could do whatever I want. I can, my grandchildren will, or will still be Irish Canadian. Right. If my great grandchildren marry out, then they're just Canadian and the government size. How do you reconcile that concept of identity? So the government has a policy on identity. Yes. And culture. Yes. They figure it out that, and it's just a waiting, in my mind, it's a waiting game. We are going to wait them out. We tried breeding them out. It's not happening. We're just going to wait them out. Yeah. One of the largest growing populations in Canada is First Nations. Yeah. But if you look deeper too, though, like the, 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 and that, and that's the thing too, is like, oh, well, waiting out's not working. Let's, let's try and, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to work this policy again yeah. to make sure that there's eventually yeah. going to, we don't have to worry about Indians anymore. Yeah. And uh, that's the, and so it's, it's really one of the, and that's the thing that I struggle with. I'm like, well, so, and I, but I, it circles back to the, the native artist. Who am I? Am I an artist? It, it, it I, the whole identity thing is a really, it's something I struggle with because yes, I'm Mi'kmaq. Well, how long am I going to be Mi'kmaq? You don't have to worry about how long you're going to be Scottish, Irish, Scottish, Scottish, Irish, whatever. Irish, whatever. You, know. you don't have to worry about how long you're going to be that way. Yep. I have to be conscious about lineage, identity, blood quantum. Like they've got it down to his, uh, uh, not a science, but they're just like, okay, in three generations, he could be, we can not worry about them anymore. They're going to be Canadian now. Hmm. We don't have to worry about land. We don't have to worry about their health or whatever. Yep. No more Indians. <laughs> yep. I'm just hanging in here because it's powerful. It's, yeah. it's just when thought about in this context and you want to talk about how to build a province or how to build a country, how can you not make that better? Or how, how can you not go back to, to that relationship and that core thing? So maybe towards the direction of a positive or to help the audience with, okay, how do we get at this? And you're a storyteller. And your storytelling attaches to culture. Do you see storytelling as being one of those healing arts as well as creative arts? It's a real for me. It's a healing art. It it has to be like I find therapy in the writing that I like the projects that I've, I've attached myself to. I do find like after the pro, after I'm done writing, I'm like, okay, I got it out. I'm good. I'm good. Mind you, something else pops up, and I'm like I need to write again. <laughs> But I, at least I'm able to incorporate. Uh, every time I write, I always try to put something new in there, or some type of like something that will just at least spark the interest of the reader. And I want to empower and inspire uh, not just native kids to say that look, I, it can be done. Look, we're doing it. Uh, but non-native kids, when they pick up the book, I try to write for everybody. And I want them to ask questions. I want them to, like, well, why is why is he writing it like this, or why is it? How come how come these native characters are the main characters? How come the what? I mean, Sacred Circles. How come the how come the white character is the background character? Well, there's a reason why he's the sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's one of those things that I, I try to play with. I was trying to play with uh, uh, play with the genre and play with the the tropes. And when you think when you're talking about reconciliation, what it what it is, it's realizing. On both sides, it's realizing your story, realizing your history, and figuring that part out. Like we have a really complex history, and 150 years is not a long time. Yes, yes, right? especially compared to First Nations history in right. Turtle Island. Right, and that, and like so, and whose story do you count with? Like, no, we don't we don't count anything from 1491, 1492 on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now you guys didn't record anything. Like, uh, we have our stories. Yes. Listen to the elders. Listen to what they have to say. Like they're, they're in there. Nope, it's not. It's not our way of doing things. Well, that's the issue. You're not listening to our ways. We have, we keep on bending the rules to try and play your game. 
But every time we get close enough, you guys change the rules. Like, nope. It's got to be this way now. Oh, you didn't source it right. Oh, it wasn't recorded properly. Oh, you didn't write it. Like, you know what? I don't. <laughs> there's, been, there's been times where just like, you know what? I, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> just leave, leave me alone, and I'll just keep on doing things my way. Yeah. So, and that, and, and then that's the thing that I wrestle with is just like, if you don't fit the mold that they're trying to put you in, um, how are you supposed to grow as an artist or a professional or I see things in my experiences mold me and shape me and help my decision making. Yep. But if it doesn't line up, I got to change my, I got I have to change my thinking to fit their mold. And it's one of those things where I'm just kind of like, I've been going against the grain for so long and I've managed to make a decent living out of it. I think I'm going to keep on doing, yeah, <laughs> doing things and, my way. <laughs> and, and that way you can, you can follow in the spirit at least of those like you where they never fit any mold, but they created breakthroughs because they hung in there long enough and finally the light bulb went on in a larger audience from Einstein who had problems with math. But, you know, but he hung in there yeah. with it, right? Because something was itching and driving. And, and that'll help maybe a larger culture or a larger society start to understand there are other ways of organizing ourselves that have maybe a better relationship with land and air and water that can actually be better for an economy and be better for a political body and be better for a community. Yeah. I, there's, there's so many, like, I mean, it's not like my, it, there's going to, it needs to be like a major shift. I'm not saying like oil and gas is going anywhere anytime soon, but there are breakthroughs. There are innovations. And it's like, well, what's the fear then? Like, what's, why are you guys so scared to try something different? Like I said, the, the things that I've like, and that's, and I think that's the struggle that I face with. I'm just like, yes, it's scary. But until if like, until you try it, then, you know, take it as far as you can get. Yeah. Right. And then worry about the con. Like for me, take it as far as you get and worry about the consequences later. Cause you're never going to gain. You're like, you're going to, if you're constantly sitting there like, Oh, I'm not going to do it. Cause I'm too scared. Well then you're never going to do anything. Yeah. And that's what I've, that's what I've noticed when I'm coming back. Like I got these great ideas. Yeah, but we don't, it's too scary. <laughs> All right then. Fear of risk. All right. Yeah. What if I try it like this? No, it's still too different. <laughs> okay. How about if I, you know what? I'm just going to do it. <laughs> yeah. and, and find your own way. Yeah. And, and I'll just find my, yeah I'll, someone's going to say yes. Someone's going to always like, you're, you just got to, you know, be a, for me, it's like I said, being a good listener and, and then finding those opportunities and, uh, that for, Find those opportunities uh, with people that will listen, and then once you got their ear, here's what here's my idea, here's my plan, here's what I want to do, and then the other part's just luck. <laughs> yeah, you need yeah you need a little bit of fate to come along and give you something. Yeah, um, we have about a couple of minutes left. How would you like to wrap us up? Oh, geez, uh, is there something you want to do about um, storytelling? Something about uh, the work you've done? Something you'd like to see happen in the future? Uh, future? Well, no. I mean, my future, like I said, my big thing is just inspiring youth. Uh, I was uh, when we moved back here, I had an opportunity to speak to the kids at Devon Middle School, and it reminded me of why I really liked uh, teaching. Um, and it was seeing that light go off. And I was in a room. It was great because I was in a room with uh, native and non-native kids. And they just wanted to, uh, they were just amazed to see someone doing comic books or writing stories. And the questions I was getting, the questions I was getting were just like, uh, well, what, what, what got you started? And, and just sharing, sharing that. And, um, I'm not, I didn't go into those, I didn't go into that classroom saying, okay, you 40 kids, you're all going to be artists now. No, you 40 kids. Follow your dream. Follow, like, if you got something that you want to do, do it. Because I did it. And I'm here talk, telling you guys that if you fo if you follow it, good things are going to happen. And that's 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 the uh, that's the thing I try to do. That's what I aim for. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon.